Hey there YouTube, John Zaremba here. I thought I would do a one-year owner's review of this Sunset Park Sunlight 16BH Sport Camper Trailer. Had it for a year now, just about, and um, I've used it a lot. I probably have towed this thing upwards of 7,000 miles. Um, one trip last year was uh, 5,500 miles by itself, and I probably spent, I don't know, 60 or 70 nights in it as well. Um, just beyond camping, taking trips when I can, um, I use it all year long. So I use it all throughout the winter and everything. But um, beyond all that, I just come out here to hang out because I like the space of it. <laughs> I like the ambience inside the camper so much. I'll come out here just to read a book or have lunch, whatever it is. So I've spent a lot of time in it. And I'm going to tell you what I think about it after having it for a year. Now, first of all, the, this is one of the best things I ever purchased, like hands down. I absolutely love this camper. But I know you want to hear the bad stuff first. So before I tell you all the reasons why I bought it and what I like about it, I got a small list of things that broke here. I'm going to preface that by saying that all campers have things that break in the first year. In fact, there's a break in period with any camper, even the most expensive ones on the market. When I was researching what to buy, I was thinking, okay, so this camper, I paid just under 20000 for it. And now you could get them for probably seventeen or 18000 because COVID has gone away. But if, um, if you were to pay more, I was thinking, okay, so what if I wanted to just spend more money? What, what can I get? Even doing research on things like Airstreams and campers that are forty or $50,000, um, the users have the same problems with them. The things that break are just the things that break. And a lot of time it's because the things that break aren't things that were part of the assembly process. They're things that were made by other manufacturers in other parts of the world. So keep all that in mind um, and keep in mind the fact that I've used it extensively. So, all that being said, here's the things that broke in the first year. It may have been the very first day or the first weekend that I had the thing, but the uh, door latch holder uh, was made out of plastic, and the first gust of wind just busted it right and snapped it in half. So I replaced it with a metal one. You see I had to kind of bend the metal to make it connect properly. And uh, it's been great since I replaced it, but that plastic one was just a piece of junk from the start. And uh, don't mind the uh, sealant there. I've um, already replaced that sealant with something that's better. That was just some cheap caulking that I got from Walmart as a temporary fix. The ground wire from the battery was simply not connected to the electrical system at the factory. Um, when I did the walk around at the dealership, we tested everything out from shore power. And I didn't even think to switch it over to battery power to confirm that everything worked there. Um, very simple fix. It just was a matter of putting it together. Took a second, but pretty big oversight uh, from the factory that that was just a miss. This is under the faucet in the kitchen. So uh, these threads are just hand tightened and it wasn't leaking at the dealership when I did the walk around, but it wasn't tightened quite enough at the factory. So after driving it a little bit, first couple weeks, these uh, threads just became loose and simply had to retighten them. Um, this is really the only leak due to a defect that I've come across and it was just again another oversight at the factory they should have tightened those up a bit better I don't remember what kind of tires they put on this thing uh, but they were garbage <laughs> I developed a slow leak on my first major road trip out west and um, took it to a tire shop they couldn't even find a puncture but they said it was something there was a puncture somewhere they couldn't see um, I think they were just made out of really crappy rubber. I don't even remember what was on the sidewall. It was some off brand that even the tire shop I took it to had never heard of before. So I replaced them with uh, obviously much better off-road tires and haven't had any problems since, but um, that might be something to consider is what quality tires you get from the factory. The shower head that comes with these things is not very good. Mine sprang a leak. Um, so I replaced it with a much better one from Amazon. I don't mind that it leaked because I would have replaced it anyways. This one has, um, is a much, much, much better quality shower. It's like the one you'd have in your house. The glue that holds this edge banding onto the side of the countertop came loose. Just had to re-glue it, put a couple panel nails in, and it's fine. Kind of along that same lines, the piece of paneling that goes under the cabinets. Um, it was cut to length, but when the wood expanded somewhat in the heat of the summer, it buckled. So I just had to tap it back into place and put a couple panel nails, you can see there, and uh, that kept it in place and it's been fine since. When installing that same cabinet, they overdrove one of the screws that holds it to the roof and it caused the dimple there from the wood that pushed up against the fabric. So I backed the screw out. Um, there's still a bit of a material pressing against the fabric, so to avoid any potential leaks in the future, I put some sealant over it. 
It didn't leak or anything, but it was certainly a mistake uh, when assembling it. And just to give you an idea, the rest of the roof has held up really well. Here's a year of ownership. It's under cover in my yard, but even still, no other leaks, no cracks. All the seals are good, and the material has been really solid. Okay, we're looking at the inside of the furnace. That's the sail switch. That's what tells the furnace when to ignite. And there was so much sawdust inside the cabinets and everywhere else that it basically ruined that sail switch. I thought that I could just clean it, and I did clean it, and it worked for a while. But um, I had to replace it after a couple weeks of cleaning it. It just was ruined from the sawdust. I've got a whole video on that process. You could check it out if you're curious. All right, so now talking not about things that broke, but I'm going to give you some more negativity. Here's some things that I don't like about it. Um, I wouldn't even say these are design flaws. I would just say these are, I don't know. If I was designing this thing myself, I would design it differently. There's things I would do differently. And this is maybe a personal opinion. So you guys may not even care about this, but I'm going to tell you about a small handful of things that I'm just not so fond about regarding the camper. My biggest gripe and really the only real complaint I've got about the camper is the air conditioning unit. And it's not that it doesn't work well. It actually works too well. It's overkill for this tiny little space. Um, it makes so much noise when it's running. It's fine in the daytime and stuff, but I can't sleep with it turned on. So it makes it difficult to use this air conditioner and use the camper really in really humid, hot nights. I can't sleep in it. Um, if you're in the bed, you can kind of feel a certain amount of vibration coming from the air conditioner because it kind of just it doesn't shake the camper. It's not like that, but it just puts enough sound through the, through the uh, construction and the framing and everything in the camper that I feel it and it drives me nuts. Uh, if I were to do anything different, I would sacrifice the height of the refrigerator. I'd get a smaller fridge and I'd put a wall unit in instead. So it, I would have it set up similar to the Sunlight 149, the smaller version of this camper. And uh, that would solve the problem for me. All right, the toilet has a step to it. <laughs> and I guess it's because there's a tank under there. I don't know the reason why. I, I haven't, it, it has bothered me a little bit, but I've dealt with it. Um, my feet, I'm, I'm five foot 10, so I'm not really a small person, but my feet have trouble touching the ground when I'm sitting on the toilet. So I have to use a little baby step, like a toddler's stool, like a potty stool when I go to the bathroom. Um, it's kind of humiliating and embarrassing, but I, I, my feet fall asleep if I'm sitting on that thing without it. Uh, if I would do it different, I would, have, I would find a way to make that flush with the floor. All right, this is a bit nitpicky. I know you got to have an escape hatch in this camper. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why there's a law about that. The thing is, like the inside of this is like 14 feet or something. I mean, you can get out the door as quickly as you can get, quicker than getting out that window. But um, the, the mechanism on the window that allows it to pop out like an escape hatch, it, it's in the way. So if, if I, I usually have my pillow there. And if it's closed, it's not so bad. But when you open it up, the little end of it, the nub sticks out. I've gotten used to it. I know where it's at now, so I kind of live with it. But I would prefer to have that window somewhere else or have a different window be the escape window. That thing just kind of bumps in your head if you're not used to it. To access the storage underneath the dinette, you have to take the cushions off and then there's a piece of plywood underneath that you lift up to get to whatever you've got there. And the storage is great, don't get me wrong, but I would prefer if there was a door on the outside or a drawer on the outside to access that stuff. Uh, I've seen some people that have modified theirs. They've cut holes there and they put little doors to get to that. It, other campers have that. This one doesn't for some reason. This model just doesn't come that way. So I think that's going to be something I do in the future to make it easier to get to those things. It'd be nice if it just came that way from the factory, though. I, I would never use this stereo anyways, but it's worth saying that it sounds terrible. Um, the, the audio quality from this thing is, is miserable. Um, and I don't think it's just the crappy speakers they put in. I think the head unit itself is just is, is awful. It's functionally good. I mean, you could play things off of USB. It, you could control it from your phone with Bluetooth. All of that's great. And um, you've got speakers on the, the ceiling inside, um, which is fine, I guess. And then there's even speakers outside as well. I, I don't know what kind of nut you'd have to be to play music outside your camper at a campground or something. That would, If someone was doing that next to me, I'd be irritated. But they're there for people that want to use it. But it sounds like crap, so um, I would rather them just not have included the stereo, save a couple bucks that way, and um, I just I have a Bluetooth speaker that I use in, inside if I'm going to listen to music a little bit louder. The arrangement of the stove and oven with the sink is a bit bizarre to me. 
I'm not sure why they put the oven next to the bed. And it's not just my particular camper. They're designed this way. All of the 16 BHs have it this way. Um, it's not, not that it's a fire hazard for me. I mean, it really isn't. I use the oven and the stove all the time. My biggest problem is the splatter from whatever you're cooking on the stove gets on your bed stuff. So I have like a little shield that I fold up and I unfold it and I put it there and it protects that stuff. But if they just swap the two positions, um, it would be so much better. Okay, so now not talking about problems or design flaws, but just some upgrades I made. Um, you can see I put in a backup camera. The camper came pre-wired for it, so it was a very simple thing to install, just a matter of plugging it in and mounting it up. Don't judge that caulking. I put proper sealant afterwards. Uh, that stuff from Walmart did not work well. But having a backup camera is wonderful, especially just as a rear view mirror as you're driving down the highway. All right, behind that uh, photograph, there's a backing board for the TV. That's where they want you to put the TV. It's got the connections on the ceiling for it and stuff like that. But um, I haven't had cable. I think I got rid of cable in 1999, if I remember correctly. So I would never use any of that stuff. Um, I do like to watch TV, though, especially like if I'm out boondocking or something like that. I still like to have the TV shows and the movies and stuff like that that I enjoy. I've got all that on USB drives. So you can see I put my TV at the foot of the bed with that stand. That stand fits perfect. I got it on Amazon, and that way I could watch TV and uh, do whatever I want wherever I'm at without having to mount it on the wall. While there's good storage everywhere in this camper, there's no storage in the bathroom, no shelves or anything. So I bought this rack on Amazon. Um, it's a really narrow rack that's made for like European toilets, and it fit just perfect in this little space. In fact, that's the only one I could find that would fit in this space. So there's a place to put towels and, you know, toiletries, whatever you want. And um, that bottom shelf, I kind of just folded it back so it wouldn't be in the way. But um, that worked out really well. I've got a whole video on the plumbing stuff I've done. You could check it out if you want. But I use this camper all year long. So it's like a Four Seasons camper for me, even though it's not designed to be that way from the factory. But you can see I've got heat tape around the pump and the tank and then some insulation along the pipe that goes in. Um, all that is wired up. You can see that extension cord that goes through. It's wired into the uh, inside of the cabin under the uh, dinette, and it just plugs in to the wall. And all of that is on a thermostat, so it kicks on when it gets below 40 degrees. So that basically prevents everything in that front storage from freezing when it gets cold. I've used this thing in like 10 degree weather without any problems, but if it's really cold outside and I'm concerned about it, I could always open up that little storage compartment door and that lets any of the ambient heat from the cabin go into the front storage where the water tank and stuff is. So there's never any problems with it that ways. The camper comes with plastic fittings for the elbows and the tees and these really terrible clamps that are just prone to loosen up and fail over time. So I replaced all of the fittings with brass fittings um, and using the screw type hose clamps. So this way, if I needed to tighten it up for some reason, I'd be able to do so. And then um, in certain spots here, like under the sink, I used uh, push to connect fittings. So these are flexible. That way the, the pipes can actually swivel inside the fittings, which helps if you're going down a bumpy road or something like that. Not that you should keep your water under pressure when you're driving anyways, but even still, it makes it a bit more flexible. And then I put some valves to uh, turn the water off to the bathroom in case I ever had a leak in the bathroom I could shut it off and then there's also some valves to shut the water off to the uh, sink above so all that makes it just much more like normal household plumbing which has worked out really well I use this thing like I said really really cold temperatures all winter long without any issues okay so now on to the good stuff I, honestly I was sort of hard pressed to come up with complaints about this camper because I really have been quite happy with it it's one of the best things I've ever purchased um, I chose it uh, mainly for the size first and foremost it's under 20 foot. It's about 17 foot long, about 8 foot wide. Even with the sport model that has the lifted suspension, I'm still under 10 foot tall. Um, it maneuvers really, really well. I've taken it down some bumpy dirt roads. I've taken it just right out in the middle of the desert where there aren't roads, and it gets over bumps and stuff just fine. Um, it's got a good departure angle on the back, so it doesn't have a big overhang. It's very easy to back into you know, a tight camp spot. Everything about the size and the form factor is ideal for me. You get four stabilizer jacks with this, one on each corner. And usually a smaller camper, you're lucky if you get two. So that's kind of a nice thing to see in this price range. 
So these are the newer tires I put on it, but even without the tires, it came with really nice alloy wheels. Um, typically in this price range, you're going to get just basic black steel wheels. Uh, I'm not all that stylish, but I do really like the fact that they put more expensive wheels on it. So we get two propane tanks with this camper, which is pretty unique for something this size. Usually you only get one tank on a camper this small. And they also include a diverter valve inside, so you can mix the tanks or choose between one or the other. Um, this is great if you're boondocking uh, or going on a long trip. I was on a two-week trip out west, and I never had to worry about running out of propane. And even though it's a small thing, they give you this cover as well. It probably cost them like 10 or 20 bucks to include that, but a lot of these smaller campers don't give you a cover to protect the tanks when you're driving down the road. We also get a battery cutoff switch, something you don't see on these smaller campers. So this is nice if you're just worried about accidentally draining your battery. You can simply turn it off and that gives you complete control to uh, not have to ever worry about a parasitic drain or something and your battery will always be fully charged. These front storage compartments, it's really one compartment but you could access it on both sides uh, because it's a pass-through storage. It's massive. I mean it's the whole underside of the bed. You could see how much space is in there. I've got a lot of my stuff loaded up but a lot of these smaller campers uh, won't give you a pass-through or there'll be something that's in the way that prevents you from using that full space under the bed. Um, in this case, there's plenty of room, and it's a big opening, so you could get big totes, and anything you want to put in there should fit. Two awnings. This is really a nice thing. Um, most uh, campers don't give you two, especially in this size. you got one over the back and then one over the side. So what's nice about this is you could have the screen door open, the side window open, and it could be raining, but open up your awnings, and then you'll protect your inside of the camper from getting wet and still get some ventilation. It's also good for the sun protection, of course, as well. But um, really a nice thing to have on something this small. And then you control them inside. They're power, so you get a switch for each one. And then they're also lighted as well. And the lights on them are just perfect. They're not too bright that they're obnoxious, but they're bright enough so you can see your way into the camper if you're out in the dark somewhere. So pretty cool to have two. Again, a very simple thing that you get on a lot of campers, but for some reason these smaller ones don't always include it, and that's a place to store your sewer hose. You never have to put it in the front compartment or inside the camper or in the trunk of your car. The, the cap pops off. It fits in there just perfect. And um, again, I don't know why that's not standard, but for some reason on smaller campers, that's not a standard feature. Another minor thing that's really nice to have is the way that the power cord uh, retracts into the camper. So I think it's like 15 foot long if I remember right, but you lift up that lid, it's uh, protected from the elements, and then you just push it in there when you're done. So it's just one less thing to have to pull out and set up whenever you get to your campsite. It's um, out of the way, but it's always there. You'll never forget it as well because it's always built into the camper. There's no ladder to get up to the roof, but it is walkable, which is kind of a unique thing for a small camper like this. It's built to support your weight if you need to get on the roof to service it for any reason. Pretty nice thing. And while we're outside, just a note on my uh, weight distribution hitch from Anderson. Um, this thing has been a lifesaver. Uh, I've got a whole nother video on that you could check out. It makes the uh, camper so much easier to tow with a light vehicle like my 4Runner. Um, levels it out real nice. Never had any problems with it. It's really been a great investment. You would think that all campers come with a spare tire, but some of these smaller ones actually do not. So it's great to see that we've got one here. And um, it's an all-terrain tire as well. And it's the same size as the normal tire. So it's a, a great thing to have. While we're looking at it, I kept the cover on this tire from uh, the dealership I bought it from because I've had such a great experience at that dealer. So just a, a positive word to uh, Scenic Roads in uh, Manchester, Tennessee. If you guys are ever looking for a camper in Tennessee, I highly recommend that dealership. All right, talking about the things on the inside, the number one factor for me was a separate toilet from shower. This is a dry bath. Most smaller campers you get are going to have a wet bath, which means that the toilet is inside the shower. And that's perfectly fine, but being able to take a, a number two without having your feet sitting in soapy water is a really nice luxury when you're out in the middle of nowhere. They put an excellent exhaust fan in this bathroom. Usually you get like one of those little four inch computer type fans. This is a big 10 inch fan and it blows in and sucks out. So it gives you both directions. It's got different speeds. Um, it does such a good job that uh, I will just open up the windows and turn this fan on and it'll pull air through the camper to give you a nice bit of airflow. Really great fan. Speaking of exhaust fans, there's a, um, a hood over the stove and the oven. 
So this uh, brings all of the smell of whatever you've been cooking outside the camper so your camper doesn't stink like your food for a few days. Um, it's a really nice thing. I don't know why this isn't standard on most campers, but it's not. It's also got a light, so it gives you a little bit more illumination if you're cooking something. And then it actually vents right outside the camper. So um, pretty cool thing that's uh, nice to have. We get an oven in this camper. Most small campers give you like a two burner stove. Um, I've got a three burner stove and an oven that's all on propane. Um, this is really, really good if you're off grid, boondocking somewhere out where you don't have electricity. Uh, you could cook just about anything in an oven and it doesn't use a lot of propane. It's a big enough space where you could actually cook a pizza in there if you wanted to, but it's not so big that it uses up a bunch of your, of your gas. So really like having this oven. Now, even though I don't need a full size fridge, I would be fine with a smaller one. Like I mentioned earlier, it is nice that, um, this is a three way fridge. So it works off of shore power, battery power, or propane. So again, another nice thing when you're boondocking. If you need to keep your food cold, this fridge is going to do it. And it's got an automatic setting, which is typically what I just keep it on automatic. So if I'm driving down the road, um, it's going to continue to be powered from the, the electricity from my car going into the camper. So my food doesn't thaw by the time I get to where I'm going. And if I'm going somewhere where there's no electricity, I can run it off propane. It uses quite a bit of gas, but if I need to keep frozen food for a few days, I've got a way to do it. Just to talk a little bit more about the windows, you got a giant window over the dinette, which is really nice. You've got the window over the bed, even though I don't like the latch, it's nice to have it. You got another one over the sink. Lots of ways to get ventilation, not to mention the screen door. So that door latches and you got a full size screen. Lots of airflow in this camper. Um, there's even that vent in the bathroom. So all these different places that you can get light and air. And there's a skylight, I should mention that too. Most of them have that, but that's a nice thing to have just to get some light in the bathroom. Um, no, no shortage of airflow in this camper at all. There is so much storage space in this camper that even on my longest trips, I've never needed all of it. But you can see you've got storage above the dinette, really uh, deep pockets there. It goes all the way back by the fridge. So you could get lots of pots and pans or whatever you might need in there. Pretty good. Like I mentioned, storage under the dinette, even though it's a bit awkward to get to, you got two really big compartments there. You got that door that opens up. This takes you into the front storage compartment outside, so it's a great way to access those things. Under the stove, a little bit of space by the water heater. Under the sink, enough room for a trash can and some extra things, so lots of storage there too. You even get a drawer for silverware or plasticware in my case. Above the sink, there's even more space up here, so you want to keep some dry food or whatever you might need. Good place to put it. Above the bed, you got these three big compartments. Um, this is where I normally keep clothing and stuff. I'm not on any sort of trip right now, so these are all empty, but that's a great place to keep all your clothing. And then of course you've got the closet. I took the door off to make room for that stand and the TV, but there's plenty of space back there for anything that you might need. All right, the last reason I wanna mention why I like this camper so much, and this is probably the most superficial thing, but I absolutely love the way it looks. I'm a woodsy kind of guy. I like paneling. My house is all paneled. Um, I like the feel of this. It feels like a real cabin inside here. It's very warm, very comfortable. Um, all of the seams where the trim is put on and stuff, it all lines up very nice. They did a very good job of assembling everything. And it looks finished. It looks proper. None of that goofy wallpaper stuff that uh, is going to peel off after a couple years. The flooring is all good. Um, overall, it's, just, it's a nice place to be. I come in here all the time. I just come in here to hang out because I like the space and the ambience of it so much. Ricky likes it too. All right, YouTube. So that's my one year owner's review of the Sunset Park Sunlight 16BH Sport Camper Trailer. Uh, like I said at the beginning, I'm very happy with this camper. I have absolutely no regrets. The things that broke on it in the first year are things that would have broken on just about any other camper. The upgrades I made to it are upgrades I probably would have had to make to any other camper as well. And um, I really do think it's like the best value in this price range. You get more features and functionality and just a cooler looking camper. You know, I know that's superficial, but if you're going to spend some time in something, you want to like the place that you're spending time, right? So I've been totally happy with it. No regrets at all. Um, I hope this video helps you. When I was shopping around a year ago, I couldn't find a one-year owner's review of this camper. There just weren't any of them out there. So Maybe there are some now that I don't know about, but at the time there wasn't. So hopefully this helps you make a decision to buy whatever camper is best for you. If you have any questions about mine or any comments or anything, leave them below. 
and I appreciate you watching it. Thanks.